As if you didn't know, I'm here in St. Louis, Missouri. I have a story that I want to talk about. And unfortunately, it took place here in uh, St. Louis, Missouri. I don't think you heard about this story, but I'm pretty sure you're going to have some things to say. I'm, I'm curious to see what your take is going to be. But I'm going to say this. It is hard. It's hard for individuals who are working a nine to five job that, that doesn't even mean to be, it doesn't even need to be a nine to five job for you individuals who are working a regular job. I'm self-employed for you individuals who are working a regular job. I understand it is hard, especially in a, re, uh, a type of job where it involves retail or some type of, I say, uh, high theft rate, high pilgrimage rate, like a Walmart or something like that. Now, it's a situation that I'm about to talk about the story that happened in St. Louis, Missouri, a few days ago, where two individuals robbed at gunpoint a Starbucks. Okay. They came in and they robbed the store a Starbucks here in St. Louis. I'm going to get, get to the story. I'm just trying to frame it for you. The bad part about all that is the two employees who stopped where well, I would say protected themselves. I'm going to get the whole story. Starbucks fired them. They lost their job. First of all, I'm going to tell you the whole story, but let me give you an example. If you are a uh, security guard or a worker at Walmart or whatever, you're a cashier or you're that greeter at the door and someone walks past you with a TV, two or three televisions in the basket, in the buggy, and you know doggone well that they're not going to show you the receipt, which is a whole other story. I don't show receipts either. But they're just going to walk past you. Are you really going to put your life in jeopardy to stop that individual? Really? You only make X amount of dollar an hour. I'm not trying to be funny. I'm, I'm so serious here. You only make X amount of dollar an hour. All the merchandise in that place is insured. What gives you the thought process to put on your cape to want to stop someone else to walk through to keep them from when you judge another, you don't you do not define them. You define yourself. Wow. My wife just says, OK, were, were you talking about me, wifey, or uh, you just making a blanket statement? Hopefully you just make it a blanket statement. If that was about me, I have a I, I deal with you when I get off air. But getting back to what I'm saying, that's not your merchandise. That is not your merchandise. So why are you putting yourself in harm's way? Even if you are a security guard, that's not your merchandise. I just never understood that. But this situation doesn't even revolve around that. This situation revolves around the individuals, the employees, they were complying. I'm going to get to the story in a second. They were complying. They were complying. They were trying to get into the registry. I, I'm, I'm going to get to the story. But the individual, the one of the assailants, took his weapon and hit the worker across the head with the weapon. So at that point, in my mind, that's self-defense. Oh, that's that's self-defense. Yeah. But let, let, let me get to the story. Let me get, I don't get it. In St. Louis... I, I don't know. St. Louis, you guys are worrying me. Okay, let's go. Let's get to the story. Starbucks fired two baristas for stopping armed robbery. That is crazy right here in St. Louis, Missouri. Let's go. Now, before we get started, the first two, the two, the two on your left are the worthy armed assailants. Okay. The young man on the right is the one that lost his job because he got hit across the head with a weapon. Just read this. Here we go. Starbucks fired two baristas who stopped an armed robbery at a downtown St. Louis location. The robbery took place last month. Oh, I, thought it took some, I thought it took place sooner than that. The robbery took place last month that is notorious for crime and violence at around 12 noon, right in the doggone middle of the day. 
two masked gunmen barged their way into the Starbucks and ordered everyone to get on the ground. One of the gunmen approached 20-year-old Michael Harrison at the cash register and ordered him to empty it. Unfortunately, Harrison did not have the credentials necessary to open the register on the spot. All you guys that used to work at a restaurant before, you know, or if you were a, a manager, the cash register has a key. You put it into the uh, the, uh, the, 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 the the key thing, obviously, and a certain key goes all the way to the right which will allow you to get the full reports and also allow the register to open. He's just the regular employee. The regular employee doesn't have that key. So, of course, he couldn't get there. Okay, let's go. He asked the manager who was on the ground per the robber's request to get up and help him open it. The manager was frozen with fear and did not get up, understandably so. The robber became impatient with Michael's inability to open a register, so he decided to pistol whip him. Michael's co-owner noticed that a piece of the gun. Here, now, nah, here we go. Here we go. Michael's co-owner uh, noticed that a piece of the gun had broken off after the robber hit him with it. This alerted him that the possibility of the gun was being fake. Of course, the co-worker got off the ground and rushed the robbers with Michael's help. The barista tag team was able to fight the crooks off. One of one one of the men, the person who hit Michael with the gun, was apprehended by police on the spot. The other fled. The, the the other criminal fled, but was captured later at a different location. Now, okay, Michael and his lawyer maintained that this was simply a case of self defense. After the robber hit him with the with with, with after the robber hit him in the head, with was thought to be a gun. Everything was done to comply with the robber's orders, but that did not prevent the assault from taking place. Everything after the assault was purely self-preservation, not an attempt to become a hero, specifically for Starbucks. Hey, whoa, now listen. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Starbucks, you're out of order. St. Louis, oh, St. Louis, St. Louis, St. Louis, St. Louis. St. Louis is one of them liberal cities. Yes, I said it. You already know I'm going to say it. I am conservative. It is what it is. Probably the only one in my family. It, it is what it is. It is what it is. St. Louis is very conservative. Between St. Louis and Kansas City, which Kansas City and St. Louis is liberal, all the other space, if you look at the map of Missouri, you got Kansas City on the west you have St. Louis on the east, right? All that space in the middle, all that space in the middle is conservative, all red. But you got them two cities, St. Louis and Kansas City, blue, liberal. And you get these liberal laws. I'm sorry, I don't mean to turn it into that, but it is what it is. Because how else can you explain an individual who got hit in the head with a gun he realized it was fake. First of all, let me back up. He was complying. The policy is to comply. If the robber comes in, the alleged robber comes in with a weapon and he tells you to open up the register, you open it up and you give it to him. Comply. Comply, comply. That's fine. But once that assailant hits you across the head and you have and you have the wherewithal to re even if you wasn't a fake gun and it, and it was a real gun and you was trained enough and you was gutsy enough to try to get the weapon away from them. And you did. That's not grounds for losing your job. That's self-defense. You were struck with the weapon. Here's my question. What's the policy for as Starbucks is for as if you get hurt in the middle of a robbery and you just give up your body? What's the policy then? Is there like a payout involved? Is there some type of uh, built-in insurance that you can claim to get? I I'm curious of that, which I already know the answer. I already know the answer, but hey, listen, I, I, I don't get it. Would you put your life on the line for a job that, I mean, I mean, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. Talk to me, co-host. Talk to me. Not unless I own the place. That point. That point. Not unless you own the place. And, but first of all, I'm serious. You hit me with the gun. 
Now, if it was a real gun, I'm not Superman. You hit me with the real gun. Hey, what am I going to do? Listen, I can't. You got the gun on me. You got the ups on me. Man, I know it's going to hurt. Damn, I'm going to be mad as hell. But what what, what am I going to do? Now, if you hit me with the gun and piece of it fall off, and we all know about weapons, a real weapon, nothing fall off a real weapon because it's made of steel. Right. Nothing's going to fall off. Right. Only thing that's going to fall off is if you hit me so hard across that sucker and you hit me sideways and the clip, clip button, up, right. right, and you hit me side of the face with that, oh, and when that clip released that, uh, the button released that clip, then that's different. But if just a piece of something fall off, yeah, it's on. You just assaulted me, and it's one-on-one -on -one now. Right. So that's how I took it. But Starbucks right. actually fired this young man. I hope, I hope this lawyer and himself is going to be victorious. I hope they are, because that is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. But I believe Missouri is a, uh, what's that phrase? Work at will state? Right to work. Right, right to work, whatever it is, where they, but no, it's it's where they have the right to fire you for anything, yeah. most likely. For I mean, I mean, it, that, that's right to work. Yeah, right. Where this what it is? I forgot the phrase. Okay, I, thank you. Yeah. But yes, oh, Saint, yeah, Saint. Hey, listen, Saint Louis, crazy. Ain't nobody, ain't no, ain't, 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 ain't nobody coming to see you, Otis.